They'll always be associated with one of the most successful movie musicals of all time. But off screen, the stars of Greece were struggling with addiction, life-threatening illnesses, and disappearing loved ones. Ed Burns was probably best known for his role as Cookie on the detective series 77 Sunset Strip from 1958 to 1963. Then he showed up in Greece as Vince Fontaine, the radio announcer who visits Rydell High for the national dance-off. In 1988, Burns dedicated a rehabilitation clinic and spoke to the Washington Post about his own experiences with addiction. For him, it began with wine, but later expanded to drugs before he became sober in 1982 with the help of a 12-step program. A big part of his struggle had to do with his difficulty landing roles at that point in his career. As he recalled, I was the last person to know I had a disease. It was hard to admit I had a problem when I still had money, property, prestige. How can I have a problem when I'm driving my new Mercedes and it's paid for, and I have a house at Malibu? Burns died in his Santa Monica home on January 8, 2020, at the age of 87. Sid Caesar appeared in Greece as Coach Calhoun, the gym teacher who helped Danny find the right sport to play. Caesar was a comedian and actor perhaps best known for his two TV series in the 50s, Your Show of Shows and Caesar's Hour. Caesar was wildly popular in his prime, but he was also an alcoholic. In his memoir, Where Have I Been?, he admitted, I was the spoiled child who had all the toys. What I needed was someone to question me and make me face up to how I was slowly destroying myself. Because I would take pills and I would go on a plane and, and booze and you know, fall asleep and they couldn't wake me up. While filming Your Show of Shows, Caesar had become dependent on drugs and two bottles of scotch per day. In his memoir, he described this period in his life as a 21-year blackout. His erratic behavior ruined his reputation and made it difficult for him to book any roles. Eventually, enough was enough, and Caesar checked himself into a hospital in 1977. He died in February 2014 at the age of 91. Joan Blondell had a long on-screen career that dates all the way back to 1930. In Greece, she played Vi, the head waitress at the Frosty Palace. She was a fixture of Hollywood's golden age and continued working steadily until her death in 1979. But there was tragedy behind that consistency. Blondell met cinematographer George Barnes while filming the 1932 movie The Greeks Had a Word for Them, and they married in 1933. A few years later, Blondell set her sights on her Gold Diggers of 1933 co-star Dick Powell, so she divorced Barnes and married Powell in 1936. They were together for eight years and had two children together, but ultimately divorced in 1944. Blondell's third husband was producer Michael Todd, whom she married in 1947. Unfortunately, Todd lost virtually all of his money the year before and married Blondell in what appeared to be a gold-digging scheme. He'd also been suspected of killing his previous wife, Bertha Freshman. Todd was a reckless, debt-ridden gambler who spent all of Blondell's fortune over the course of their three-year marriage. By 1950, he had moved on to another rich and beautiful woman, Elizabeth Taylor. And Blondell had to work hard to dig herself and her children out of near bankruptcy. Pink Lady Marty Maraschino was played by Dinah Manoff, who got her start in the mid-70s with various movies and TV shows before starring in Greece. She continued acting steadily for a few more decades, including a part in the original Child's Play and a regular gig on the NBC sitcom Empty Nest. But then in 2008, she took a step back from her career. In an interview with Empty Nest TV, she revealed, When my twins turned three and my oldest turned nine, my wonderful husband and I decided it was time to get out of Dodge, aka Los Angeles. In 2017, Manoff was back in the spotlight for a tragic reason. That was when her oldest son, Dashiell Mortel, was killed in a car wreck on his way back to campus at Washington State University through snowy conditions on January 7. He was a passenger in the car which hit another vehicle, flipped onto its side, and got hit by an oncoming truck. Afterwards, Manoff told BainbridgeIsland.com, After Dashiell died, I was in so much pain and grief that I felt the only people I could be around were people who were also suffering. His greatest passion in life, they said, was bringing laughter and happiness to the people he loved. Manoff was eventually able to find solace by teaching fine arts. Dennis C. Stewart played Leo, aka Craterface, the antagonistic leader of the Scorpions gang. 
After appearing in the iconic musical, he had some minor roles on TV and played Crater Face again in 1982 for Grease 2. But then in 1993, he contracted AIDS, and after developing pneumonia due to complications from the disease, he died the following year at the age of 46. On July 29, 2019, on what would have been Stewart's 72nd birthday, the AIDS Memorial shared a touching tribute on Instagram from his friend Peter Robinson Jr., a New York-based photographer who also has HIV. Robinson explained that he and Stewart met in a bar in the 80s, and they used to dance together whenever he visited New York City. He was very private about his personal life, but also carefree and upbeat. As Robinson wrote, Dennis was out about his sexuality in New York City. Very much so. I'm not sure about Hollywood, though. He was so sweet, and after we cleared, we had no sexual interest in each other. He would hang out at my apartment in Murray Hill, and we would laugh all night long. On June 30th, 2005, Olivia Newton-John received the terrible news that her on-again, off-again boyfriend of nine years, cameraman Patrick McDermott, had gone missing. He was on an overnight fishing trip with 22 other people off the coast of Los Angeles at the time. A Coast Guard investigation concluded that McDermott had likely drowned. That October, Newton-John told The Early Show, It's really, really painful for me. And it is really, really personal. We miss him. We love him. We're still kind of praying that there's a chance he'll come back. Theories have arisen in the wake of McDermott's disappearance, including speculation that he faked his own death. There have been several supposed sightings of him in Mexico, with some people believing that he fled his life in Hollywood due to mounting debts. I believe he's probably working for some people down in Mexico that probably uh, don't like, uh, uh, how we say, publicity. Danny Zuko became an iconic heartthrob, all thanks to the performance of John Travolta. The actor has enjoyed a steady, major Hollywood career since then. But behind the scenes, he's endured some significant personal tragedy. While on a family vacation in the Bahamas in January 2009, Travolta's son Jet reportedly had a seizure, hit his head in the bathtub, and died. He was only 16 years old. When Jet was two, he was diagnosed with Kawasaki disease, a rare condition that can cause inflammation of the blood vessels. Although Jet's cause of death was listed as a seizure, it's been noted that Kawasaki disease does not typically cause seizures. It's been speculated that Jet had autism, which has a greater association with epilepsy. According to this theory, Travolta and his wife, Kelly Preston, may have denied this because of their association with the Church of Scientology, which reportedly does not recognize autism. Travolta shared a tribute to his late son on Instagram in April 2022, on what would have been Jet's 30th birthday, as he wrote, My dearest Jetty, I miss you more than words can say. I think about you every day. John Travolta met Kelly Preston in 1987 while they were working together on the movie The Experts. It was practically love at first sight. As Preston recalled to Us Weekly in 2018, I see, no lie, coming across the hall with his two dogs, this really hot guy. Then he stops and says hello, and I was like, oh, shit, kill me now. You know, like, oh my God. He came up to me and I was like, hi. Travolta and Preston married in 1991 and then spent the next three decades together. But then on July 12, 2020, she died from breast cancer at the age of 57. Her husband posted a touching tribute on Instagram in which he said, It is with a very heavy heart that I inform you that my beautiful wife Kelly has lost her two-year battle with breast cancer. She fought a courageous fight with the love and support of so many. My family and I will forever be grateful to her doctors and nurses, as well as her many friends and loved ones who have been by her side. Kelly's love and life will always be remembered. Before Jeff Conway played Kaniki in Greece, he acted in a variety of 70s movies and TV shows. Afterwards, he landed a regular gig as Bobby Wheeler on the sitcom Taxi from 1978 to 1982. He stayed busy all the way up until his death in 2011 at the age of 60. Leading up to his passing, he'd been admitted to the hospital for pneumonia and sepsis and was placed into a medically induced coma. He was taken off of life support two weeks later. But an injury that he suffered during the production of Grease may just have played a significant part in his death. While filming the Grease lightning scene, Conway was dancing on a car when he fell. He injured his back and the pain ended up sticking around for the rest of his life. 
He ended up developing an addiction to painkillers that would eventually be linked to his death. Dr. Drew Pinsky had treated Conway for years, and during a taping of his show, he revealed, Jeff was a severe, severe opiate addict with chronic pain, one of the most serious and dangerous combinations of problems you could possibly interact with. The pain seemed to be motivating him back to the opiates, and I told him for years that it was going to kill him. Before Olivia Newton-John played Sandy in Greece, she already had a successful singing career. The musical was her first big break on the big screen. Over the course of her evolving showbiz career, she continued to act and release chart-topping hits. She also reunited with John Travolta in 1983's Two of a Kind. In her personal life, Newton-John endured years of health struggles. She was first diagnosed with breast cancer in 1992. After a partial mastectomy and chemotherapy, she went into remission, but the disease returned in the form of a tumor in her shoulder in 2013, and in 2017, it spread to her spine. She died at the age of 73 on August 8, 2022 at her Southern California ranch. She was remembered for opening the Olivia Newton-John Cancer Wellness and Research Center in Melbourne, Australia, and raising hundreds of millions of dollars for cancer research. Dee Dee Kahn, who played Frenchie in Greece, had remained close with Newton-John over the years. The day after her co-star passed, Kahn appeared on Good Morning America and revealed that her husband John and daughter Chloe were there all the time towards the end. She told me that they were just so mm. hopelessly devoted, you know. Annette Charles played Cha-Cha, the girlfriend of rival gang member Leo, who also had some incredible dance moves. She made a handful of TV appearances before Greece and continued to act into the 1980s, but then she left showbiz and decided to take up teaching instead. In 2011, Charles was diagnosed with lung cancer. That August, she died at the age of 63 from complications of the disease. A family member told TMZ at the time, Annette had recently started having difficulty breathing, and when she went to the doctor, she learned that she had a cancerous tumor in one of her lungs.